Well, thank you very much. You have just witnessed a very eventful presentation of the national budget for the year 2017. Um, I did not intend to give a derisive appraisal of this budget, but and throughout the period that the minister present the budget, I was thinking, one thought came to my head, that it is immensely unresourceful. But as we got to the latter part of the budget, particularly when he announced the measures, I changed that assessment from immensely unresourceful to immensely ominous for the future of Guyana, for the future of job creation and growth and business development, and for the future of welp welfare and growth in um, benefits to ordinary people. Now, as I said before, when the minister presented the budget, as most of you would have recognized, that he meandered from cliche to cliche. So we heard a lot of things that we had heard before, a lot of rehash of old information, and, and then some project ideas that one would recognize that have clearly not been taught out fully. Take, for example, the, the proposal to start the road to to let them, the road from Georgetown to let them, going to phase one, when no feasibility study has been done, and even the pre-feasibility studies that have been done point out that at this point in time, given the traffic flow between Brazil and Guyana, that it's unsustainable to spend 400 million US dollars on a road of that nature, which is $80 billion in the long run. So a lot of these ideas, we, I believe, were not well thought out. Um, a lot of them, as you look at the framework of the budget, it is definitely not supportive of growth. It is not supportive of growth. I will have the, another opportunity to go through the budget in great detail. But today, I just wanted to say one thing that the minister said that stood out in the earlier part of his presentation, that stood out most in my mind, was when he said, we will be issuing local bonds to finance the fiscal deficit. And it seems to be an innocuous statement. And there, on their side, they cheered about it. But behind this statement is a fundamental economic philosophy and a departure from what we have been doing. So the minister talks about creating more opportunities for the private sector, but now the government having announced this huge budget, will be going into the local capital markets to raise funds to finance the budget. What this will do, it will compete with the private sector for funds because they will both be seeking funds from the same markets, the capital markets. If you have greater competition for funds, interest rates will rise and therefore choke off growth or and, and in the future. It will have that major impact on the, on the, in, on the, con in the, in the country. Also, a lot of people will be discouraged in, invest in investing because the state now will be sucking up all liquidity or most of the liquidity from the system. So we need to explore that in great details. Tonight though, I think most people across the country will not talk about 
this issue, and I see this as a fundamental issue that will destroy any possibility of recovery and long-term growth. I, but they will talk and more mainly about the tax measures that have been introduced in the budget. They're so numerous that I do not know where to start. And the implications of a lot of these measures will not be recognized for several days into the future. So we heard, for example, the minister speaking about fulfilling a promise that they made to the electorate on value added tax. He said, we will reduce the tax rate from 16% to 14%. But in the same breath, they've decided now to extend back payments to water bills and electricity bills above a certain level. So, and then to remove the exemptions, the long list of exempted items that we had put in place because they affected poor people um, disproportionately. He is now removed the exemption. So those items, baby milk and, 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 and things that people consume on a daily basis, like now become vatable. All of their, their, the consumer items, food, etc., becomes now, now they have to pay 14% VAT on it. So a man importing chocolate or a rich guy importing, say, something fancy, now gets his VAT reduced from 16% to 14%. But poor people and mothers, single parents who have to find milk for their babies now have to pay VAT on the milk. This is what he has done. And when your electricity bill goes above $10,000, you now have to pay VAT on the full amount, 14% VAT on the full amount. Now, this will wreak, wreak havoc on large numbers of people. If your water bill goes above $1,500, then you have to pay VAT on it. How could this be helpful to, to anyone? The, the, he has removed, um, I, I, frankly speaking, there's so many issues that it's impossible to go through this today. And I know many of you are rushing to catch the six o'clock news and other things, but I, we will have opportunities for this. So now you have to, um, you have, a reduction in corporate tax, one element of it for manufacturing activities, but you have to now keep two sets of books because you're still paying that on the, on the commercial side at 40%. No benefit to, to anyone. You, you have an increase in departure tax. You have an increase in the premium tax. Capital gains tax, would you end up paying more? Fees for passport, you will end up paying more. 50% increase. Right, 50% increase. Transfers of vehicles. Imagine, imagine a motorcycle. He said it will go from 5,000 to 25,000 if you sell your motorcycle, or 2% of the value of the item, whichever is higher. So just imagine when it gets to a car, when it gets to a car and you have to transfer it. He said there will be an increase in all the miscellaneous fees, and he didn't list them. There's a long list, so we don't know what those are as yet. Liquor licenses will go up. Removal of the non-resident VAT refund. Budget agencies now, government budget agencies, will have to start paying VAT. So what he's effectively done is to cut the budgets of all of the ministries by 14%, particularly money set aside for procurement, because they can get, they will now have to start paying VAT. He's effectively cut, cut, cut the budget. Locally produced items that were on the VAT exempt list, so I think there were some consumables, um, things for the, the construction sector, now will be subjected to VAT. 
a reintroduction of the environmental levy. You recall the big hype about PPP and the levy, yeah, which was which was against on on foreign production, basically foreigners bringing bottles into Guyana and things like that, containers, and if they did not take them out back, they, they would not get the refund. They made a big issue about that and now have just reintroduced a tax, a, 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 an environmental levy on these things. So what, guess what will happen? The price for all of those things will go up again. Um, they, maybe you can tell me a bit of, uh, more about some of the other taxes. I've just started missing some of them. There's, I, I was writing, and at some stage I decided not to write anymore because they are just too numerous to mention and too much for us because the information is scanty, too much to understand the impact on the country. In all my lifetime, this is probably the worst budget I've ever seen. The budget that brought in the most taxes in the history of our country. And, and in a fundamental way, has destroyed any possibility of any recovery in our economy. As will create more hardships for thousands of people. We have heard over three hours of budget presentation and you have not heard about a single set of activities that will the ordinary man out there can think about that will bring more jobs to them or address their concerns. We hear a lot about training a few people here and there, and they've established several slush funds, and you know how they administer the slush funds. So one is now under Trotman, 650 million set aside for consultation on oil and gas. And they go to, the, to, to particular areas using it for partisan purposes. Now they have a youth slush fund. They have one for social cohesion. They have for training. And these training budgets are used for partisan political activities, like how they use $50 million for local government elections just to travel to the interior from the social cohesion ministry. $50 million in airfares. So a lot of the slush funds have been established in the budget. But what is there for ordinary people? If you are sitting in Linden, you're a logger, and you listen to the minister, what can you relate to in his budgets in specific terms that will change your lives and bring more jobs to you? If you're miners, look what they've done. The tax proposal too. Because miners were treated, they paid 5% royalty and 2%, that was a final tax. Now that may not be based on the explanation he gave, the final tax. So this could create a whole range of disincentives in the mining sector as to how they treat income, who they sell their gold to, because all of this will be exposed. All of this, here they would be subjected maybe to greater liabilities, tax liabilities, and maybe would reduce the declaration of gold. So what are the miners getting out of this budget? What are they getting out of this budget? What are the rice farmers getting out of this budget? What are the sugar, sugar workers getting except $9 billion now in a budget that is $250 billion? They've reduced the percentage of it. And, and we're, we're told we decide later. What, what are the workers getting? Nothing. I, I was stunned that he, he mentioned the workers in passing. I was stunned. Nobody, the old age pensioners, will get a, a small increase, a few thousand dollars more, but now they have to pay the VAT on their water, water because they no longer have, they took away the water subsidy, the water bills, they have to pay VAT on it. They now have to pay VAT on the electricity to the old people. Um, but they will get a free passport too, right? They don't have to pay for their passports. This is the sort of budget that we have seen. Um, it will kill the, kill the contracting industry. 2%. The contracting industry with this 2% um, upfront. upfront tax. That will be the deducted. And ominously, imagine all of you here, and the 700 and 75,000 of us who live in Guyana. 
if we owe the GRA or the GRA now assesses or thinks that we owe them for any taxes, the GRA will have the power to go into our bank accounts now and take the money. Garnish, Not garnish, garnish our money. Go into our bank account, any one of you here. They feel you owe them, they don't have to come after you anymore. They'll go to the bank and take the money from your account. Garnish your funds. This is unbelievable. I ne never thought I'd witness this here today. I thought we we're coming to discuss a pro-growth budget, a budget that will create, create jobs for people and greater income and bring welfare. A budget that looks at it. Winston Jordan uh, spoke about the model of development, but he has not spoken anything new about the green economy. And the budget is titled the green economy. Nothing new than what, what the president said. It's all declarative statements, the rehash of old cliches. You know, we want re renewable energy, we want this, we want that. All of these solar panels that they're putting in are now going to tackle the fundamental question of baseload power for this country. And, and will it re re benefit people? Because they still have to pay for electricity, whether it comes from solar or whether it comes from, from fossil fuel. And how do they store the power for night, at night if you have solar energy? All of these things are just, when you look at the sums of money, there are tiny sums of money set aside. It's to create the impression that they are going on a green pathway. But the green pathway is not about just solar energy or doing a few of the things they said. Electric cars, who's going to buy an electric car? You don't have a, even a charging station. They're going to give people a chance to start or, or a hybrid. That's not the green economy. The green economy is about development. It's about creating income. It is not about whether you plant trees and, and you get a couple more green vehicles in the country. I suspect the two years tax holiday that they are giving to people is because they've already identified companies. supporters, companies. So on the three areas, they've identified who they want to bring. Um, and that's why they're going to give them a tax holiday. Why didn't he say, the president said, we want to tap gas from the landfill site. Mm -hmm. Nothing about that, because it's nonsense. You can't, you don't even have enough gas there to run two homes, probably now. I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's a hyperbole. But, but, but you have to build, the, in the design of the landfill site, you have to put in the pipes long before. Not at the end, you can't tap the, the gas. Pure nonsense, conjecture, charlatan ideas, just repetition. Jordan has spent hours and hours reading back things that are in IMF documents, in plans that we left, like in the education ministry, just taking whole sections and putting them in the budget. They mean Black nothing. Pepper. Yeah, the black pepper, spices. I, I went to, and turmeric and all of those things. Those are old projects. Where it mattered, where it mattered was when he came to the policies. And you've seen the true nature of this government here. It's a taxation budget. It's a budget that will long be remembered for disincentives to private investment. For, it might be very well be the budget that will kill uh, the private sector and it will bring untold hardships on ordinary people. So maybe we will end here, unless anyone wants to say something, but. I, I'll just like to bring to the media's attention yeah. that you are leaving here this afternoon without even any information by way of documentation, which is a new standard that is being set. If this government was interested in getting the information yeah. in this budget out to the people, at minimum, they would have provided you with a copy of the budget speech and the estimates. Yeah. But I'm now advised that you, in order yeah. for you to get a copy of the estimates in the budget speech, you have to go to the Ministry of Finance, I guess, produce your credentials and almost genuflect to their altar and beg for a copy in order for you to get it to disseminate the information to the we have three, three copies here. We can lend three media houses, but get back them to us if you want. You can't lend your house. You, can, you don't want to lend your house? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then the two no, of right, us no, with no. lend. Yeah. The two, right. No, um, no uh, let me, which, which one? Yeah. 
You know, we got it. All three of us got it, and we go and get some more. Yeah, we're gonna get it, man. Go give Len no, your thing. Let, Don't be so I, I, no. stingy. I just want to say uh, right, right. And Len, Len, um, this is no, no. this Why is where uh, Starbuck News. Give one to um, I, uh, Times. One hundred nine. Now the minister very but skillfully listen, said you're getting that back my document. He has attached to to give it an appendix. To bring it back. He has attached an appendix of new license and fees that he did not mention in the budget. He didn't want to call it up for yes. the people yes. here. Let me just give you an example. Some of the proposed uh, increases are more than 500%. Moving from $100, uh, some from $2,000 to $15,000. Let me highlight two. Painting of number on local cards. That's a horse-drawn card. Has moved from $75 to $7,500. <laughs> Painting of name and number on carriage or card for hire has moved from $15 to $5,000. Those are just two examples of more than 45 can get. fees, license, and penalty that has moved by more than we 500%. Need, we need time to digest this. It's, it's a so, little too much. Um, <laughs> yes, you get Kai Chor that. <laughs> Opposition had to lend me your houses <laughs> for copies of the budget speech so that the nation could get the information. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, 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 we all will get it back. Things that consumers will not really feel uh, the impacts on the electricity bill because it's being reduced effectively from 60% to 40%. How do you feel about that? But it was not there before. But you know, you understand this guy. No, 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 no. But but let me explain this. If you're if you're a low income household, and eighty percent of my basket of goods, the things that I consume are VAT exempt. They're zero rated. So the potatoes, the rice, the flour, etc. They're all zero rated. Whatever else, you know, baby milk and all of those things. My electricity payment is VAT exempt. My water payment is VAT exempt. Now I have to pay on all those items, 14%, plus the electricity and the water. How does it help me? That is, it affects poor people disproportionately because that basket of goods that we had selected, the items that we had zero rated, those were, those were going to mainly for poor people. Yeah. 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 Yeah.